All right, guys, happy Thursday. It turns out that we are going to be home for the rest of the week to accommodate the snowstorm down here in Nashville. Now, there are a lot of things that I say on this show, but I really do believe that this is one of my finer moments. If I could get away with punching one person in the face and have no consequences, it would be President Zelensky. Yep, I still feel the exact same way, and it turns out people are coming over to my side. Let's talk about that. Plus, I was persona non grata for 24 hours at least because I said that I support Vivek. And now that Trump supports Vivek, everyone's done the flip-flop and it's totally fine and we should definitely talk about that. And later on in the show, let me ask you a question. What do you think inspired this? <laughs> yep, whatever you're thinking, you're probably wrong. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. You know, it's been a crazy eight years, and I don't know that many people are truly awake to just how much propaganda we suffer here across Western civilization. I think people think it's exclusive. You talk about propaganda and you go, oh, that only happens in communist countries. And here in America, we're free and the press tells the truth. And it's really important to press pause and consider just how many propagandist efforts we have survived again over just the last decade. So I'm going to remind you of some because there is a, a very important lesson for us to discern. First and foremost, who could forget the extreme propagandist effort of the mainstream media? On the night that Donald J. Trump was elected president, you remember they told us that the world was going to be over, literally? Yeah, here's a little reminder. This is the time for real wisdom. Lightning round. If Trump wins, how about bursting into tears and screaming for the next 45 minutes? Well, America is crying tonight. I'm not sure how much of America, but a very, very significant portion. And I mean literally crying. Everybody is crying and so upset. And it is the end of their world. Feels like the end of the world. We were on uh, Lifetime last right. night. And I was uh, slowly getting drunk is what happened to me. How do we explain how this is possible? How did this happen? Experienced politician versus racist fake gynecologist. Get your abortions now. Because <laughs> we're going to be f and we're going to have to live with it. You're awake, by the way. You're not having a terrible, terrible dream. Also, you're not dead and you haven't gone to hell. This is your life now. This is our election now. This is us. This is our country. This is a different earth yeah. today than it was 24 hours ago. It's a different place because uh, it just is different. It just is different. It's a different earth. How dark and sinister suggests get your abortions now what was being repeated all throughout the mainstream media narrative was that Trump was literally, literally Adolf Hitler, that we were going to lose all of our rights. Of course, none of that happened, but people suffered a psychosis because of hearing this from people that they trusted, the experts. Oh my gosh, journalists would never lie to us. It really must be the end of the world. And when I say a psychosis, I mean it. Remember this young woman? Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President Obama is the ex president. It's been a great honor address. to be able to introduce for the first time ever anywhere the 45th president of the United States of America, Donald <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing, but I shouldn't be laughing. This is a part of me that feels bad to her because I think what I've learned over time is that the human brain is incredibly susceptible to propaganda. If people start repeating the same thing over and over again, people accept it to be true. And that woman is screaming legitimately. She actually believes that the world is going to come to an end. She believes that she is going to experience Armageddon simply because Trump is about to be president. And of course, like I said, none of that actually happened, actually this nation did pretty well under Trump. Even people that were not Trump supporters will admit that economically they were doing better when Trump was president, much better than uh, the current state of affairs with Joe Biden as president. 
But of course, the media moved on and there was another reason that we were all going to die and none of us could possibly forget COVID as we saw things here in America that you couldn't picture. The media convincing you using a ticker. I mean, think about the psychological aspects of that. A ticker to tell you that every second of the day somebody was dying of COVID and therefore it would be completely ridiculous if you went outside. Until, of course, the great saviors of humanity, Big Pharma, uh, came out with a vaccine. And at first, those same propagandists told you that if you got the vaccine, you were going to be 100 percent protected. Let's go back to Rachel Maddow. Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them, the virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere else. It cannot use a vaccinated person as a host to go get more people. You hear that? Get the vaccine and you don't have to worry. It's going to just stop it dead in its tracks. You just, you can't spread it. Every single vaccinated person is, is completely going to be safe. Well, that's what they wanted you to say is that people lined up and they did. People obliged. And I want to be clear, this was not left or right. Propaganda works on people left and right. We have seen this over and over again, especially when you're talking about death. That's always the threat, right? You're going to die unless, right? You're going to die unless you vote for Hillary Clinton. The world will be over. It's going to be Armageddon. You're going to die unless you get the vaccine. People, as I said, rolled up their sleeves. They got it. The celebrities came out doing the weird Instagram posts. You guys remember all of that? Rolling up their sleeves. Who does that? Why do I want to see what you're doing at your doctor's office? But again, this was remarkably sponsored by Big Pharma, and you were supposed to do your part and get the vaccine. And many did. And then, of course, the media had to switch gears because it turned out they lied. They just wanted to make money. It was about profits. And it turned out that if you got the vaccine, it didn't actually protect you from spreading the virus or even getting the virus. And so they just completely pivoted and instead wanted to yell at unvaccinated people who didn't fall for their propaganda and suggested, our President Biden, that you were going to die. You're just going to die for not being vaccinated. That's your punishment. Take a listen. It's here now and it's spreading and it's going to increase. For unvaccinated, we are looking at a winter of severe illness and death for unvaccinated. Yeah, that was a lie, a total lie. Here I am, still unvaccinated. My children are unvaccinated. My husband is unvaccinated. Yeah, we just never got the COVID vaccine. We also didn't abide by their weird six feet social distancing rule because it defied common sense. We also didn't mask up and somehow we survived. We somehow survived. And what's happened since is now they're admitting that they lied. Anthony Fauci recently said that they just kind of made up the six feet social distancing and that they did have some sort of an understanding that, of course, masks were not going to decrease the spread. But they don't care about the psychological aspects of people who believed their every word, people that didn't see their families for years and people that still today are so traumatized by that much propaganda that they're still masking up. Yeah, you can go to the airport and it's not everybody. I would say it's a minute number. But there are people that are still wearing masks because they just somehow feel safer. Yeah, the mainstream media broke them mentally, but no one is going to have to suffer the consequences because, hey, at least they minted tons of new billionaires um, in the big pharma industry. Which brings me to, I think, the most recent propagandist effort. And this one pains me. It actually makes me angry. Yeah, I'm talking about President Zelensky and the war and the mainstream media pretending that everything happened beginning on February 24th, 2022. Russia invades Ukraine. Oh my gosh. Get your iPhones, everybody. Find the Ukrainian flag, which you definitely would never have been able to point out before then. Yeah, I know the majority of Americans probably can't even point to where New York or the UK is on a map, but let's try Ukraine. Pull up the flag, put it in your bio and your profile, because this is the next new emergency. Yes, remember they told you that Vladimir Putin wanted to raise the Soviet Union again. He wanted to take over the world. A nonsense, a nonsense. Unless you are a person, like I said, that is susceptible to Western propaganda, because part of the Western propagandist effort is to make sure people are uneducated. People don't know anything about global affairs. Like I said, people don't even know where Ukraine is. So when they started telling you that Vladimir Putin was just trying to take over the world, people just ate it up. And they said, of course, we must aid Ukraine. And those of us that pointed out the obvious were hit by the mainstream media. I mean, I, I can't even tell you what I suffered for sharing 
Vladimir Putin's speech that he gave leading up to this invasion, where he told the truth that the West had made certain guarantees to Russia with the fall of the Berlin Wall. That is a fact. James Baker, the then Secretary of State to Gorbachev, said, listen, you do this. You guys agree to allow the Berlin Wall to collapse. We promise you that NATO will not expand one inch eastward. Vladimir Putin in a speech said, this is a lie. Because what did America actually do? No, of course, the war and what happened between Ukraine and Russia didn't begin on February 24th, began much earlier, I would say in 2014, when our CIA staged what is referred to as a color revolution, and we installed President Zelensky. That's what we did. That is a fact. Look it up, what the, what the Obama administration did in 2014. And essentially, we caused, we were the spawn of all of the trouble in that region. What is Zelensky? He's a gangster. That is what I have said from the very beginning. And that is what the New York Times and the mainstream media agreed upon. That was what they agreed upon when they would write about uh, Zelensky prior to this invasion when they switched gears. They would say that he was an oligarch. Uh, they would say that he was corrupt. They would say that there were things that needed to be done to Zelensky because obviously this sort of corruption should not be allowed to stand. But then, of course, we had an incentive and we just decided to brainwash an entire population to support what really has just been the mass killing of an entire generation of young men. Yes, but at first, let's just reflect on the propaganda. The propaganda that this war was going to be very short. It was going to be over in a couple of months. Among many, and many reasons that they were telling us at the time, Putin's dying. Do you guys remember that? Do you guys remember all these headlines? Let's, let's just go through them quickly. Here's the New York Post. Putin's constant leg twitching during Kim Jong-un meeting reignites health speculation. There's another headline in Business Today. He will die very quickly. Ukraine's intelligence head about Russian President Vladimir Putin's health. Here's another headline in the New York Post. Putin battling cancer and Parkinson's disease, leaked emails claim. Here's another headline in Men's Health. I don't know why they're particularly concerned about this matter. Russian President Vladimir Putin accused of taking steroids that cause aggressiveness in bodybuilders. Yeah, they told us Putin was going to die imminently. And they perpetuated this. It was always a nonsense. They told us the war was going to be over again so quickly. Don't even think about it, guys. We just need a little bit of support that we have to give to Zelensky. And then don't worry about it. We'll tell that to the Ukrainian men. Conservative estimates put it at about half a million young men that have been killed. They are now recruiting men that are 45 years and older because they're running out of young men. And it turns out that now they are pretty much admitting that there is no path to victory for Ukrainians. And just as a refresher, the evil dictator that we're all supposed to hate, Vladimir Putin, yeah, he was the first to call for peace talks right away in 2022. And people said it was absolutely foolish to listen to that. But now Vladimir Putin is asking for peace talks now that he's killed an entire generation of his own men and there's no path forward and we're supposed to go, what, hooray? Hooray? Just so you guys understand, and I think it's because we are so far removed from conflict here, of what we're actually talking about. When you so senselessly call for war, when you mock people that are ca calling for peace and saying, no, maybe we should stop being involved in these conflicts. Maybe we should stop listening to propaganda that is so clearly coming down from our CIA and intelligence agencies. Here is an actual clip of what is taking place in Ukraine, which is essentially trench warfare. Take a look of their Christmas Day. This is Christmas Day 2023. So essentially what you are seeing here are, yes, trenches that are dug and young men that are running through them, shooting at each other. You are having scores of Ukrainian men that are killed and Russian men that are killed for just a couple of yards. They're just going back and forth. That's why I said reminiscent of World War II. Think about those conditions when you learned about them of what they suffered through, uh, the rodents, the sickness, the bacteria that they are living through. Their life is a nightmare, okay? And in that particular clip, which obviously we are not allowed to show because it is quite violent, it ends with a Ukrainian man being killed by a Russian. So when you quickly accept the mainstream media narrative and you say that it is the correct moral crusade that you know nothing about and you stick a Ukrainian flag in your profile, this is what it spells. 
It spells death and it spells destruction because that's really what it's become about. I, I believe that the left and the mainstream media are it's a death cult. They are always wanting to promote death and dying and they laugh at those of us who accurately call it for what it is absolute BS. It is lies. It is conditioning people not to think, but to instead react emotionally with very little information. And we have the Department of Education to thank for that, turning us all into emotional shells. And we respond according to whatever our mainstream propagandists say. It needs to stop. Everybody reflect on all of those situations and wake up. Wake up to the truth. We are being lied to over and over again. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. You must have a consistent nighttime routine to function at your best. If you're struggling with sleep, you need to check out Beam. Beam's Dream Powder contains a powerful all-natural blend of ingredients, including magnesium L-theanine. It's not just your run-of-the-mill sleep aid. It's a concoction carefully crafted to help you rest without the grogginess that often accompanies other sleep remedies. Several people at The Daily Wire use Beam's Dream Powder and are always saying how great it works. Today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder, their best-selling hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Now available in delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and mint chip. Better sleep has never tasted better. Just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir or froth, and enjoy before bedtime. If you find yourself struggling to sleep, give it a shot. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, take advantage of their New Year sale for 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash Candice with my promo code Candice for up to 40% off your order. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. Man, today's Thursday. A lot can change in a couple of days in politics. Politics be so fickle, man. On Monday's episode, I was defending myself, saying that, yeah, I still support Vivek Ramaswamy. He's absolutely brilliant. He supports future of the Republican Party. I had to defend myself because people were saying that I was a traitor. I brought, did you portray President Trump for acknowledging a young man that is clearly so brilliant and a person that I would love to lead this country in any capacity? But then what happened is all those people that came after me suddenly completely changed their mind in literally a blink of an eye because Donald Trump embraced Vivek. Yeah, Vivek stepped down and said we all need to support the obvious Republican nominee after he only garnered 8% of the vote in Iowa. Trump invited him to New Hampshire and was equally blown away by Vivek Ramaswamy because, as I said, you can't spend any time with him without walking away, understanding that he is built differently. He always has been. It's genetically, I think he is an anomaly. And here is Vivek on stage with President Trump in New Hampshire. That is what American exceptionalism is all about. That is what we are going to revive to, yes, make America great again. Vote for this man right here in the New Hampshire primary. God bless you and your families. And may God bless our United States of America. Thank you, New Hampshire. And that was all it took. Apparently, everyone was like, yep, he's great. He was suddenly trending on Twitter. Uh, people were pretending they didn't hate him 24 hours earlier. I don't understand that. I just have never suffered from peer pressure. Genuinely, I can just say that about myself. I didn't suffer from it when I was in high school and college. I just say what I actually believe. And if people don't like it, so what? But yeah, this fickleness is just something that I think needs to stop. People being that susceptible to change. I don't think that's a great marker. And I think that my colleague Matt Walsh said it best when he wrote this on Twitter. He wrote, I don't care that Trump attacked Vivek, initially, of course. They're running against each other. This is politics. It is what it is. But if your own professed opinion about Vivek has now changed on a dime because Trump said so, that says a lot more about you than it does about either of those guys. I couldn't agree more. Here, here's what I will say. Some of you guys clearly grew up in the Christina versus Britney era, and it shows. Like, you never knew that you could bop tunes to both. You never knew that you could put on Hit Me Baby one more time and a genie in a bottle. You felt like you had to be tribal and you had to pick sides. You just weren't allowed to see anything good in the other person, or you were betraying and you weren't loyal. It's absolute crap. I've been honest about this process from the very beginning. I've said, I think 
and still believe that Ron DeSantis is a good governor of Florida. If I lived in Florida, I would be voting for Ron DeSantis. I think that he was heroic throughout the COVID era, myself being a person that is very vocally against vaccines, especially when they are new and not tested. But I also was honest in saying that he didn't have the juice when it came to becoming president. You're allowed to hold that opinion. You're allowed to say Ron DeSantis is is and was a good governor, while also saying that you don't support him from president, while also saying that Vivek represents the future. Again, I, I, I do think that we're suffering some in sync versus back, Backstreet Boys, old school dilemma where you just think that it's either this or that. It's a false dichotomy of choices. And what I want to also say is that what frustrated me the most throughout the Vivek stuff was the people that are just so disingenuous when they bring up stuff from his past that is completely irrelevant to what he's doing today. Nothing brought me greater frustration than him consistently having to answer for accepting a scholarship. And I don't know if people were just being disingenuous or if maybe some of these people didn't go to college and don't know how scholarships work. Like you can just uh, receive a scholarship from the school that you go to. Vivek accepted a scholarship. Obviously he was valedictorian of his high school. So he probably had tons of scholarships thrown at him, which is literally translation free money, who would not accept free money to go to school? He accepted money to go to law school from a scholarship that came from Paul Soros, not even George Soros, from Paul Soros that the school had established. And they tried to use that to say that this somehow meant that he was in bed with George Soros. So dishonest, especially given the fact that Donald Trump took money from George Soros. Yes, people don't want to talk about that because it's actually not a big deal at all. But Donald Trump, when he was building the Chicago Trump Tower, collected $160 million from investors. And among those investors was George Soros. Here is an article from the Chicago Tribune back in 2004 talking about that. Nobody cares about that. And by the way, nobody should because you're talking about something that pertains to business. George Soros, yes, we know politically he is a monster. Of course, we talk about his foundation routinely on the show, the Open Society Foundation, Media Matters, all of these sort of not-for-profit things that he does because he is trying to influence the world. But don't forget that he's also a hedge funder. He has a multi-billion dollar hedge fund. So if you worked in the business world and you did some sort of a business deal with him, it's not because you agree with his politics. You can be completely shut off from politics and not paying attention to what he's doing on a foundation level. He earned his money as a hedge funder, and then he took that money and did a lot of things that were evil. People that are not separating that are people that maybe don't have the greatest hedge fund, you know, business acumen. I don't say that as an insult. I say that as a reality. You know, I, I wouldn't know much about being a welder, right? And so maybe some people don't understand the differences between how he's operating as a hedge funder and people that are working with him versus what he's doing in politics. Unless you are able to attach these individuals, Vivek and President Trump, to George Soros within the political realm, it shouldn't hold your interest. I'm not interested in that. So I just wanted to say that people be more genuine in the future about your attacks on individuals. All right, guys, moving on. At the top of the show, I asked you to just guess some context. Just give it some context, a clip of a violent, a rather violent brawl that took place. And I'm going to tell you, this took place at an airport, of course. And of course, I wasn't there. And my feelings about airports, I don't know. It's making us all a little kooky. But even more stunning is the fact that what you are witnessing is an employee. Her name is Shakoria Ellie. And now I'm going to show you a little bit more of that fight. And I still want you to guess of what, what could have inspired her to act like this at Harvest and Grounds at the Atlanta Airport coffee shop. Take a look. Can you my stuff? No, you can walk away. No. I'll get your Yes! Right? 
my goodness, what could inspire any person who is at work to suddenly turn into a violent animal and not just begin fighting one person, which is what she had initially was going after, another employee, another girl, but then to turn around and say, I will just box everyone. I will fight men. I don't care. It's, it's clearly it must have been a life or death situation. I, I, I could say in the context of what makes me like that, my children are being threatened. I, I might turn into that animal. My children are being threatened. But no, that is not the circumstance for Shakoria Ellie. Her child was not being threatened. Her life was not being threatened. In fact, Shakoria Ellie was arguing with another employee over espresso shots. Yeah, you heard me right. It was just a little tiff over espresso shots. Apparently, when police arrived on the scene, they began meeting with other employees just to understand how the situation could have taken place. And the report says that one employee who police identified as Shakoria Ellie became so angry that two of the store managers had to hold her back from attacking the other employee again over espresso shots. I don't know what to say, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what is happening in the world. Actually, it's not happening in the world. This is, I think, very unique to America, I would say. This this lack of civilization is unique to America, uh, probably part and parcel, again, as I've mentioned throughout this show, of a lack of education. What you're seeing here is somebody that is behaving like a toddler. I have toddlers. They are extremely emotional, and it's hard to reason with them. And I think that when you remove education from any individual, they resort to australopithecus type behavior. I can't even tell you how many times in the show we have just an absurd thing happening at an airport. And of course, you would think that this young woman got arrested and charged. Nope. The current update on Ms. Shakoria Ellie is that she has neither been charged or arrested following the incident, despite the fact that it took place at an airport where you would think maybe she would be federally charged. Nope. Not how it works anymore in America fact, this kind of behavior is condoned. I'm, I'm sure she got some street cred in the end. All right, guys, moving on to a person that I follow and I'm a huge fan of. I rarely talk about the micro celebs that I am a fan of. I should do that one day. Just give you guys a list of people that actually I think we should be promoting and celebrating. Not everything is an evil, but I think the reason why this person is so great is because she's not in Hollywood. Um, if you are following her on Instagram, you might have heard of her. Uh, she goes by the handle Ballerina Farm. Uh, she is a woman who quit dancing. She was a ballerina. She attended Juilliard in New York. Her and her husband decided to move out to Utah, and now they just farm, and they lead a remarkably wholesome life. Her name is Hannah Nealman. Her husband is the hog farmer, and I think his handle is like hog father or something like that. And it's just wholesome to, to follow her on Instagram. She's got eight children, and she's constantly baking and cooking for them, tending to the chickens. Uh, again, with her eighth pregnancy, she gave birth at home. Everything about it just feels really organic and wholesome, which is the reason why she always goes through such ridiculously controversies, because she's garnered this following. Women like to look at it, uh, especially women like to look at this wholesome lifestyle, and now they are selling their products. I actually uh, bought their starter kit kit for dough to bake bread because she bakes so much bread. And like I said, because it's wholesome, of course, the media has attacked her. They tried to problematize it. First, what she suffered through was people saying, oh my gosh, we looked into it and actually she's a liar. Her and her husband have money. Uh, he's somehow related to the JetBlue family and people believed that she was just some poor farmer. She never once said that they were poor. In fact, if you have common sense, you would actually deduce that they have to have some level of wealth because she was a ballerina. It takes a lot of money to be able to keep up um, that particular craft, especially because she went to Juilliard, which is an incredibly expensive school in New York City. I never thought she was poor, but I guess they say, if you're a farmer, you must be poor. And they felt like it was some sort of false advertising, completely and utterly ridiculous. Well, Hannah is again coming under fire for something that is patently ridiculous. Now, if you are not familiar with Hannah Nealman, she also part-time when she's not uh, busy on the farm, she participates in beauty pageants and she recently won Mrs. American. By the way, she gave one of the greatest speeches ever, one of the greatest answers ever, rather. Um, take a listen. When have you felt the most empowered when have you felt the most empowered? I have felt this feeling seven times now. 
as I bring these sacred souls to the earth, after I hold that newborn baby in my arms, the feeling of motherhood and bringing them to the earth is the most empowering feeling I have ever felt. So we have a woman that is competing at in pageants and has a bunch of young women looking at her saying that what is aspirational is motherhood. I mean, what is more beautiful than that? And again, she stands by what she says. You can find it on her Instagram. It's beautiful to see how her kids participate in their lifestyle, how they are little farmers as well. And of course, that is the reason why she constantly has to suffer um, just being destroyed by the press, people that are just trying to say and problematize her entire lifestyle. This time, it's because she is just 12 days postpartum, and she seems to have lost her weight, her baby weight, and she is showing people how she is preparing once again for another pageant. Take a look. So for those of you that are not able to see this listening to the audio, she's essentially showing herself getting ready for the pageant. You can see that she still has a tiny bit of a postpartum belly, but not much at all. Uh, her younger toddler is holding the infant, and she's just showing her getting her, her hair blow-dried, getting ready at home, and then trying on clothes that she's potentially going to wear. I mean, she looks fantastic. There's no question that for somebody who just had a baby 12 days ago, she looks completely amazing. And now she's getting her hair and her makeup done while she's holding her infant, while she's breastfeeding. She's wearing a gown. In my estimation, this is wonderful. It sends a signal to young women that your life does not end when you're having a child, which is what we saw yesterday. And people, I don't want to have a child. I Somehow my life will be over if I have a child. She's saying the exact opposite. She's just jumping right back into life. So why are people so upset about this? Well, in the comments that I have seen, first and foremost, they just can't believe that her postpartum body has, has gone back this way. And they say that it sets unrealistic expectations for women that they can just jump back into their lifestyles when other people are suffering from maybe postpartum depression. Maybe some people got C-sections. Okay, she didn't have a C-section. She was able to have a natural birth at home. She feels great. Her body bounced right back. What is wrong with that? Literally ask yourself what is wrong with that. And you will finally, you will likely find that the answer is people project, right? People project. People see other people that are happy, that are healthy, and they project their own insecurities onto that individual. I made a joke at the top of one of the shows that six weeks postpartum, I was like, yes, feeling so great because I got back into my jeans and I saw one commenter say the exact same thing to me. How would you, how could you say that, Candace, that bouncing back in wearing your jeans uh, that you were wearing prepartum, why would you say that it sets unrealistic expectations? I'm not setting any expectations. We all have different bodies. I am saying what actually happened for me, right? <laughs> I'm very happy that I got back into my pre-partum genes. Why shouldn't I be? Why do people have to shut up about uh, their lives if it makes other people feel like they're not enough? And she's not saying to those people that they aren't enough, right? At all. Everybody has different experiences with labor and delivery. I obviously, it's a topic that's near and dear to my heart. I have an entire series that is dedicated talking about vaccines and talking about my own postpartum experiences. You don't make it seem as though Hannah has done something wrong because you're maybe feeling insecure about yourself when you potentially have done nothing wrong either, of course. Like it, everybody has different experience. And so I just want to say, I am a Hannah Nealman Stan. I absolutely love her. I adore her. I think that she is one of the healthiest things that we have seen in pop culture recently. And the best part about it is she's not trying to be in pop culture. This is not um, a young woman that aspires to have paparazzi taking pictures of her. She's not telling people, hold on to your youth forever and take all of these serums and Botox. And she hardly ever wears makeup. I've only ever seen her wear makeup. Uh, when she is getting ready for a pageant, she is totally always dressed down on a farm. She loves her husband. She loves her family. Guys, please just allow people to be wholesome and good for once because there's plenty of toxicity that we could instead reserve our anger for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to jump into some of your comments regarding episodes past. The first set of comments are pertaining to millennials and what we are now seeing is I think a lot of propaganda that we suffered through when we were in high school and we no longer aspire towards family. This person writes, I'm a millennial and decided not to have kids or get married. I prefer to be alone and not 
be controlled or tied down to anyone. I feel like I will lose my sense of self if I was married with kids and I know I would be miserable. I can come and go as I please without the hindrance, headaches, arguments, or stress. I love it that way. Yeah, so what I would say to you is more power to you. Everyone should live their lives as they see fit. But just the way that you describe being in a relationship, it's just so wrong, you know? The idea that you're tied down, that language right there signals to me that you you view relationship as, as a form of captivity. You also say that you can now come and go as you please without hindrance, headaches, arguments, or stress. I don't argue with my husband. I'm not stressed out. Um, we does we communicate when we're coming and going, obviously, out of respect. But again, the whole idea that relationships are something that hinder you, I believe, is a part of a, a millennial simulation. And, and I think that your comment is actually evidence of that. But again, more power to you. Uh, this person writes, I def had daddy issues. Absent alcoholic father who was never around. I did not want children until I met my husband. He was raised in a very loving family, even though his parents aren't together. I never wanted children until I saw what an amazing man he is and how amazing he would be as a dad. I lucked out. So yeah, obviously what happened to you was that you suffered a childhood where you saw things, um, which made you think that this must be how it is everywhere and in every household. And then you met a man and you saw a family that proved to you that it could be something different. So again, largely giving credence to what I'm saying is that the way that we are shaped when we, we are young... Um, definitely has an impact on our ideas when we are older. And I just hope people understand that, that no matter what happened to you in a child and no matter what you learned when you were in school, that is not actually the reality. The reality is, depends on who you marry. And I believe that children add just so much happiness to your life. Even when they're driving you crazy, uh, they still add a tremendous amount of happiness. And I, I just think it's what it's all about. I think life is all about family. It's not about work. All right, guys, last couple of comments, this time pertaining to Cardi B. This was, I think, the biggest comment, or at least the most well-liked comment, under me just talking about how I genuinely felt bad for Cardi B, hearing her voice break, talking about the breakdown of her marriage or the instability of her marriage. Who knows if they're together today? Uh, it seems to change every other week. This person wrote, if Candace and Cardi ever sat down for an interview, the internet will break. I'm down for it. I think it would be a great conversation. I, I think the media has probably made it seem like we have less in common. And there are tons of things that we will never have in common. But again, as I've always said, I do respect that she came from nothing and she made something of herself. And now I just think that she's being taken advantage of. Evan writes, oh, Candace, this was so sweet. I hope Cardi B hears your message. Eden writes, we all get what we deserve and Cardi B is no exception. Just because she overcame hardship doesn't necessarily make her immune to her past experiences with men. She admits to using and manipulating men to get what she wants and she ended up with a male version of herself. That's an interesting perspective, essentially saying that Cardi B is suffering her own karma, you know, having admitted that she, you know, drugged men and then while they were asleep, took their wallets. That's a form of taking advantage, of course, and then saying, look, the same thing is happening to her now. Um, I hear you, is what I will say to that comment. The next person says, the Cardi B audio is so devastating to listen to. I actually had a lump in my throat. Despite some questionable antics with her lyrics and videos, there's no denying she is one of a kind. Best wishes to her and her family. Listen, I personally believe that Cardi's B life but that her entire life could be so much better um, if she truly embraced uh, conservatism and if she stopped putting out such filthy music, if she stopped creating the world that she is now suffering from, a world that tells men that, hey, look at the next half-naked chick. You don't have to worry about it. This girl says that she will sleep with you and she's great in bed. The distraction, the, the constant culture of pornography that we are seeing and that we are all suffering from definitively in America, where again, as I've said over and over again, soft core pornography has become the norm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. We will see you tomorrow though for a brand new episode.